I remember the Orioles appear at Green Man Festival backstage and they played the Wall Garden stage earlier today. How did it go, guys? You enjoy it? Yeah, it was so, so much fun. Surprised that everyone came out at like 12 in the afternoon to yeah. see us, so we were really grateful you know, for like, that. I never expect that kind of crowd from the time we were playing and we were just really yeah. thankful everyone came down to watch us so early yeah. on. And everyone was having a boogie, so everyone was yeah. dance getting yeah. into it. I did see on Twitter that you were having a beer for breakfast, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. We didn't actually eat any breakfast. We just got the beers from the car and just because it's like it's wheat, oats. It's kind of like a nutritious breakfast in the liquid it's kind form. Of like a smoothie, okay, but it just is, like, it? yeah, just you know. fermented. It's just slightly fermented. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fills you up. It's good. This is yeah. nice. Now I read that you guys all met at a family party. Is that right? Yeah. So is that where the Orioles were born? Is that how it all happened? Yeah, we yeah. literally like we born the day after, met. Oh, we met when we were so young. Uh, yeah, obviously me and Sarah's sisters. So yeah, and then uh, <laughs> we met Henry when Henry was probably like ten or something. Nine or ten. Nine or ten, oh, wow. and literally the next day we were like, you know, we should like play in a band together, yeah. even though like at the time it was sort of inspired by the fact that we all loved Green Day or like a really yes. rubbish band yeah, like that. Yeah. But yeah, back in the 2010s when the yeah. emo scene was <laughs> alive, was like the very next day after we met, we organised a practice. We learnt teenage kicks undertones. Brilliant. Um, yeah. I think a couple Far of Fratellis tunes and yeah. White Stripes, you know, all them good bands that were around at the time. Absolutely. Um, and then we, we kind of just, just steady away until we got a manager <laughs> and took it more seriously. Yeah. So. yeah. Like how was it kind of getting gigs and things like that? Because when you're quite young, it's quite difficult to secure uh, venues, isn't it? Did you yeah. find it quite difficult? I mean, like, I was thinking about this the other day and it kind of like makes me so much more proud as like a band to think of like where we've come from and the fact that we did some of these shows back in the day. Like yeah. I feel like you've got to do, it's like a rite of passage yeah. Like, yeah. to like do these <laughs> crap venues. Yes. Yeah. Like on, you know, in cities on a Monday night at 7pm, yeah. you've just yeah. got to do the, it. A lot of the early gigs we had to play, I had to lie about being 14 years old, like, just to play the shows. That's mad, And it was like, yeah. it, was, it was first on, like, a graveyard slot on, like, a Monday or a Tuesday, but I feel like we had to kind of go through that. Just playing live, just we managed to get, like, a sense of each other's musicianship and get, like, really in tune with each other. Yeah. And it kind of helped, like, five, four years down the line. That's also made us like appreciate the good show so much yeah. more. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. when we get a slot, when we have a show go as well as it did today, it makes us much more appreciative because we've played like 300 cap venues with like 10 people in. And yeah. It's always better than Stoke on Trent. Yeah. <laughs> well, you had way more than 10 people here today, so you know, it was, it was awesome, guys. Now, like playing together and stuff, like you've got a really nice 90s feel to your music, very, very like garage kind of feels. Yeah. Do you like like the nineties music? Is that what you've grown up listening to between you all? It hasn't always been that way. Oh really? Like we've we've kind of we've listened to music ever since the sixties. Like we we kind of bonded o earlier on over like Tamla and Motown stuff and all these soul records, and it's just kind of gone through yeah. the decades. I think we kind of settled on a groove. I think like it's like a mixture of the seventies and nineties that we yeah. can kind of play. In. The 90s, like well. Sonic yeah. Youth, Pavement, Pixies sort yeah. of stuff, kind of came in like a little bit later, but. Like but it then, definitely like spurs a lot of the music yeah. we play now. Yeah. We have to we always have to shout out ACR from Manchester. They were one of the first like really tight disco y funk. Yeah. What they call themselves post punk funk yeah. bands. And we just it was just like how tight they were and like the grooves they gave off that we kinda of attracted us towards that kind of music. Yeah. Yeah. And you've dropped a couple of singles this year as well. Yeah. So how have they all gone down with everyone? Because like they're like brand new and stuff like that. So yeah. they got some good responses from people. Yeah. We hope no, so. it's been amazing, like it's our first chance as well because we've put these two singles out on Heavenly Records and it's been our first chance to like kind of put out music that we really like love and stuff and it's like showing a bit of like what's to come on the album. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exciting, yeah. I think there's been like, with the album there's been a, a big transition between the last, a lot of stuff we put out and the stuff we're starting to do with Heavenly. Yeah. And I think like Bottle and Sugar were just kind of to ease everyone into where we're hoping to go with the album yeah. when it finally drops. Because you dropped a couple of remixes for Sugar Taste Like Salt, haven't yeah. you? And they're really good, but they're like very like 90s rave kind of feel yeah. to them. Like, yeah, did you have input into how like, you wanted the remixes to sound? No. We didn't really have input, but like Andrew Weatherhall, who did one of the uh, remixes for it, is just like someone who's like, tunes have been like massive for us for like ages. And, and it's just been, like, yeah. He was on, uh, he worked for Creation Records with Jeff Barrett, the um, with Jeff Barrett back in the day, and so awesome. like Jeff's always, whenever he signed a band, he sent Andrew ever all the re to remix the tune. Yeah. We're really chuffed with how it came back because I'm I'm dead into like 90s 
house rave music and like early drum and bass stuff. Yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was nice, especially the Radioactive Man edit, that was a really chuffed It was very, that. very cool. It's even better than the one we put out, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just different, isn't it? It's just different. What are you guys writing and recording at the moment? Have you got anything? You said about an album on the way, so like, is that all in the works for you guys? Yeah. We're about three quarters of the way there with the album now. Uh, I think we've only got like three tracks left to do, but yeah, yeah we're doing it at Eve Studios in Manchester, so... We've tracked yeah, um, yeah. 10 out of the 13 songs we're hoping to track. Um, with working with a wonderful group of people, uh, the Sesh Gremlin for Dutch <laughs> Uncles, Henry, wow, really? Marta Salongni, uh, that's producing Bjork's next album. She's an amazing that. producer from Italy, and we're just yeah. so thankful after signing with Heavenly that we've been introduced to people like this, that we can just work with them, create Amazing, some yes. really nice stuff with. Yeah. How has your kind of like writing process changed between you all? Because obviously like you started quite young, do you feel like it's progressed in a, like a really yeah. different way? Yeah, like over time we've kind of, I don't know, we just like consider things a lot more. Like mm. before it'd be like one of us would have a really clear vision, but now it's like all three of us have like such a good input into each and yeah. every song. Yeah. Like, it, I don't know. it kind of started out in the way that we'd write a tune and if it sounded good we'd finish, but when we signed to Heavenly, we we kind of thought about how we could manipulate dynamics and tempo to like make yeah. it more interesting and then it's all been about like learning to equally input a, yeah, to a, a equal creative input to bring out something that as a whole for all of us we're happy with yeah because everyone brings something different to the track like yeah. it's always interesting hearing as well like when we're doing the recording Sid like puts so much percussion on yeah. the track and it, it yeah. genuinely it's makes it like a like shaker that. throughout the whole thing yeah. just like yeah, really it sends it from like one thing to another yeah. We've done we've done 13 days in total, and when we track drum and bass, and it's a very long song, and the more instruments we add, we add the more like the shorter it feels. And like by Ez has finished her vocals, the song just it is actually an interesting-ish song to listen to. Which is quite <laughs> That's like, what we hope anyway. Yeah, but it is for us. So. Absolutely, and it's a lot of people are new ears to you guys as well. So that's really. Have you had some good responses across the UK and like different venues yeah, that you've played and stuff? Like dead chuffed. We've done like a couple of tours and. Wherever we've been, we've just met mates along the way, and people are actually passionate about our music for the first time, really, in we started. So it's just, <laughs> no, it's just good to people be like, no. you're actually good, and not like yeah, trying yeah. to borrow my amp or no, like yeah. grab a couple of beers from the rider. Like they actually feel passionate about the music we're making. Yeah, too right as well. You guys, honestly, you've got like I said earlier, you've got great musicianship between you all, and it's all really exciting, and I'm very excited for you. So, what have you guys got coming up? Have you got any more gigs on the way that we can catch you up? Uh, August 30th we're playing The 100 Club in London um, with Baxter Jory who's just recently signed uh, to Heavenly Records as well same label as us for his new album yeah. so we're really looking forward to that because I think that'll be like quite a good party like oh, new definitely. signing you know, yeah. the beer's out this yeah. one yeah, sure. <laughs> after that we've got a tour um, late August October early November we're doing Brighton, Liverpool London Manchester Sheffield, Nottingham, just a, just a mini one. I think we're going to put out a single before then, so watch the space. Yeah. <laughs> big cities though, very big cities. That's yeah. really exciting. It's the cities we've been playing for like the last three three years. We just whenever we the go back. The only thing I miss is that we won't be going to Glasgow, and Glasgow yeah. is genuinely our favourite city to play. It's so Glasgow. wild. Um, I, no, there's a long story about Glasgow, yeah. but it involves heavily in the pastels and just how yeah. fact. Oh, we got a tweet. I'll just say it. Go on, go on, it we, got, we got a tweet. We were sat outside in the van feeling pretty angry, and we got a tweet yeah. about two o'clock saying the pastels were coming to the show, and we we're like, oh, do you want us to put you on the guest list? And they'd actually bought tickets to come and see us. Oh so Bearing like in mind, they're our like, favourite band and our biggest inspiration. They said they, the, the fact that they'd bought money to see us play. And so we basically, as soon as we found out that, we got drunk to just get over the no, <laughs> like oh Dutch courage. And like we had, a, we sat down and I just chat with them for like maybe two hours after the show. And oh, I do not remember so nice. a bit of it, but they're the, the most amazing people. Yeah. Did you spot them in the crowd though? Did you kind of see them and you were like, oh my God. I didn't yeah. think they were here until we so saw them afterwards. afterwards. That's the best thing. I'm almost, yeah, I'm glad yeah. I didn't Thanks. see them in the crowd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's super cool though. Well guys, it's, it's all going in the right direction for you guys and it sounds super exciting. I'm really excited to see how your journey unfolds as well in music. Now guys, if you could form a super group with three other artists Ooh. here at Green Man Festival, who would you, uh, yeah, Green Man. We can take it out of Green Man if it's easy because it's quite hard. Um, if you could form with three people in Green Man, who would you form with and what would you call the band? Okay, I'm going to go straight off the bat with uh, 
sorry, I'm afraid I don't know his name or anything, but we caught a band yesterday called Kiki Gaku Moyu yes. from oh, Tokyo. Cool. And uh, I feel like the drummer from yeah, that band yeah. would hold <laughs> any <laughs> band <laughs> down. His beats were fucking amazing. <laughs> sorry for this. No, that's fine. <laughs> I don't Get it out, it's passion. I like it. <laughs> I'd have to say uh, H. R. Klein was yeah. probably yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of Hugh on the guitar. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd, I'd go with just for my long long lasting love for happiness I'd go with the he's now the guitarist was the bassist yeah. I, his yeah. name has <laughs> evaded me yeah. but I would definitely <laughs> start a band with him and the band, band name wait called. no think of one of the album names we've been trying to, we've been come up with Ooh. Olives for the Table Olives for Olives the, for the, the table. table I love yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome watch out for Olives for the Table coming to a stage yeah, near you guys my, yeah, that, that might no, it's, not, it's not, not it's not the album it's not the album just forget it forget it well guys thank you so so much and best of luck for the rest of the year and i hope it all works out for you and i'm sure it will it's amazing cheers guys